Alright guys, how's it going? So much in keeping with my exploration title, I have been mostly aimless so far uh, while playing this game. I was uh, a little bit over to the east of Saul, uh, so I decided, and my Cobra, yeah? I decided, maybe I just go pay Saul a visit, uh, just this one time. Now, I was supposed to be pirating Federation and all that stuff, but it, hasn't, it just hasn't turned out that way at all. Uh, in fact, I wanted to, you know, put my allegiance to the Independence, the Alliance, and I've ended up, you know, antagonising them more than anybody else. So, yeah, it's not exactly going as planned. In my previous game, I, I went and visited Earth. I think most people will do that when they, when they do, when they get to Sol for the first time. So this time I thought, yeah, I'll just go and pay a, a little visit to Jupiter. Uh, I missed the Great Red Spot. I, I wasn't even thinking about it when I got here. Uh, I think I was more interested in the rings. I mean, are the rings really that, that visible from that sort of distance in Jupiter? Maybe they are. I'm not actually sure. I don't think so, though. Uh, I know there is a very, very thin, you know, ring there. Uh, but anyway, that's what I decided to do. I'll pay a visit to uh, Columbus Orbital. So once I get there, I check out the bulletin board, and I find a, a kills mean credits for Warzone target types. So I'm thinking to myself, mm, probably not good enough to go there. Uh, but I'm thinking about it. The money's not great either. But I think, yeah, you know, why not just have a go at doing this? So. I basically decided I'm going to head to Barnard Star and see what I can do here. Right, so war zones aren't really places for messing around in, so I decided to buy the A3 power distributor. Uh, I get rid of all my, you know, all the other internal compartments that I'm not really using either. Uh, all I want is a decent shield and as good upgrades as I can get for, for, for the Cobra and, you know, a decent shield cell. So that's basically what I decided to do. Right, as soon as I get here, one of the first things I see is a conflict zone, but it's high intensity, which means it's going to be, well, higher intensity, bigger ships and all that kind of thing. At least that's what I thought it was. Uh, there's quite a few around here, so I think, you know what, I'm just going to try the low intensity one first. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. This is not a fully pimped out Cobra, yeah? So, something, you know, nice and easy to start with. That was the plan. Right, the first thing you have to do is choose your faction. So you go across the functions and you choose one or the other. That was a little bit faster, but I felt as if I was in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, for good reason as well, because, you know, for this to be a low-intensity conflict zone, it doesn't half look like it's got some really large ships flying around, and it seems to be pretty high-intensity as well. <laughs> I check again, yeah, it is low-intensity, isn't it? Seems so, though. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just deciding which side to go for. Two anacondas passing each other, shooting lumps out of each other. I thought, well, that is really smart. Now, it's Federation v Federation here. This is like inter-faction fighting sort of thing, yeah? Has a look around. Yeah, there's some eagles and vipers as well, so let's go and pick on an eagle. Very brave of me, I'm sure you'll agree. Right, now I decide. I'm going to go for the Bannered Star Alliance. You can see this is a this is a rather large fight, yeah. You've got to be very careful about you know the kind of situation you get yourself into because you can quite easily find yourself being attacked by a couple of pythons and an anaconda. You're not going to last long if you get caught in that. I'm picking on this eagle, doing pretty well. The video is a little bit jerky here. It was fine while I was playing, but possibly just a little bit too much for my system uh, while I was, you know, recording at the same time. There's a lot going on in this in this war zone. And I'm using flight assist pretty well there again. 
One thing I'm noticing though, I'm not doing an awful lot of damage to this eagle's hull. I mean, you, you saw me blowing eagles away before, yeah? Those multi cannon shots were really hammering into the hull and taking off like 10% at a time. I'm down to like 1% here with these. It was slightly, slightly more there. Yeah, you can tell that this eagle is, you know, a cut above the, the rest of the eagles that you've seen me fighting so far. They just seem to have better shields, better, better armor, pretty much better everything. Yeah, and I'm having a bit of a struggle against this guy, but I am slowly, you know, winding him down. And then I realize, wait a minute, you know, what else is shooting at me here? I've got missiles flying past me left, right and center. Uh, I think, right, time to leg it, make advantage of the Cobra's extra speed, get out of there and get my shields built back up. Found about now that I realise I've been using the wrong key for my shield cell as well, so uh, that's something you need to look out for. Um, I was I was using my chaff instead of my, my shield cell, so that's why I had to really get out of that one. Yeah, it's getting pretty hectic in here, and I'm, I'm really starting to enjoy myself quite a lot. Uh, you know, this is this is what I'm playing the game for, this, this kind of thing. So, you know, if you're getting a bit bored fighting the same mostly harmless uh, stuff, then, you know, war zones are probably the type of content that you want to be doing. It's certainly, you know, it's adding another dimension to the, to the enjoyment factor, and uh, you, need, you need to be thinking about what you're doing. If you look at my sensors now, there's just an awful lot of red appearing around about where I am, and this is not, you know, this is not a good situation for me to be in. So, you know, you're learning to play uh, as, as you're doing these as well. It's certainly high risk, but if, if it's, you know, if, if it's enjoyment, fun fact that you're after, then, you know, the that's this is what you need to do, I do believe. This guy's trying to run away, but there's no way I'm going to let him. If you watch his hull, though, you see just how little damage. I'm only hitting his shields now, but once his shields are down... Eight percent. I'm hitting him with everything I've got. Okay, my weapons fire's not great, my weapons power. But I'm only doing percent of damage to, to his hull and stuff. Yeah, this guy's clearly... You know, this eagle is... If this is, you know, what an eagle is like... with the best armor, then... And they're not that easy to kill, in all honesty. And when you only get 3,000 bonds for it, you start to think, mm, that didn't really seem worth it, in all honesty, considering the amount of effort that I put into it. Right, things aren't looking too clever now. As you can see, there's quite a bit more red in the battleground than there is the, uh, than there is green. So I decided, well, I'm going to try and pull this python away from the, like that ass that was making a run for it. I'm well aware that this is not the smartest thing to do, but, you know, why not? Why not, why not just give it a go? I've used a shield cell already. I've got everything into systems. You can see how quickly my shields are coming down. I'm really, really taking hard hits from that python. Uh, okay, they're not the greatest shields uh, for the cobra that I'm using, obviously, because they're very expensive. You can see there it's pretty bad, yeah, all that red against the green. Uh, but I make a run for it. I took a little bit of hull damage, but it's not, nothing too bad. But I've got this python after me now. It was an anaconda I tried to save there. Yeah, you can see he's on 13% and, and just about getting away, I think. Uh, but I've now got this python after me and, and you know, this is, this is probably not that great. I'm going to head back anyway. No, there's more than one python, yeah? Take a bit of fire. I, did, I didn't realise he was there. Now, if I hit my H key, though... Which is what I did to select the nearest target. I just didn't quite realise that that was the one that was after me at the time.
It's a great thing about the Cobra, though. You're always going to get away if you if you run early enough. Unless, you know, you do something really stupid, you're going to get away. Now, again, I've gone for the other one that's on 100%. This is, this is a mistake, but I'm just trying to draw him away from the Anaconda as well. Look at the damage. I mean, these turrets are doing to my, to my shields. It's, you know, that's a lot of damage. You start to wonder, you know, is this, is this a weakness of the Cobra? Yeah, it's got a decent hull on it. It's very quick. But look at how fast my shields are going down under this fire here, yeah? I'm using shield cells all the time. This is not really direct fire I'm taking. I'm being hit by a couple of turrets all around me. You can see two flashing now. I'm being hit by a couple of them, but I'm really struggling to keep these shields up. I even had four pips into, into systems there. I mean, I'm in the middle of it, yeah? That's not a place for a, for a Cobra to be. Uh. But it's interesting, I'll, I'll give you that. It's certainly, uh, it's fairly exhilarating. We managed to get this Python shields almost down as well. There they go. Now, I'm a pretty fierce critic of shield cells, but when you play these war zones, you start to realise why they are a requirement. Uh, because you would never, you would be running in and out of them constantly to, to recharge if it weren't for that. I still think there needs to be some kind of limit on it. Or it'd be great if they were only usable in uh, war zones. Get some really good hits in at this uh, python now. It's a little bit jerky there again, sorry about that. It's just, you know, it's just there's too much going on for the PC to, to really cope with it. Uh, I need to maybe think about turning down the settings or something if I'm going to be fighting a lot of these. Uh, but as you can see, I did quite a lot of damage in there to the hull on this python. Yeah, So long as it's not shooting at me, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, almost 20% done there, but it just turns on me and bang, my shields are gone. So once again, I need to run, you know, my tail between my legs. There's so many targets, it's really, it's difficult to, you know, stick to the, to the same one. Uh, but really it's quite exhilarating. Uh, you, can, you can tell, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can tell there is a lot going on here. You really do feel like you are taking part in a massive battle. I find my Python again though. Down at 41% hull now. Those multi cannons do a good job on, on the hull, no question about that. If you can get some shots in, even even on something like a python, you know, you're taking off a couple of percent every every hit. Uh, obviously, you know, you saw how it was against the eagle, it wasn't so great. But that just must must simply be down to the you know the armor upgrades on each ship. Down to 29%, 27%. I mean, it's not just me that's shooting at him, yeah, but we're doing a pretty good number on this guy. It's 
sadly though his shields are back up and this is this is you know when you, you do find that your damage not maybe not quite that great. Remember you're only you, you've only got the class one lasers compared to the class two uh the class two multi cannons. So you know those class one lasers they're certainly not go cutting through shields, you know, the, the same way as as the as the cannons can, can do to a hull. You can see there, you know, I'm, I'm I've got four pips into weapons and you know those shields are holding pretty well. Got a nice little dogfight going on here, just me v Ham. Um, he's shooting his turrets as well. Almost got his shields down again. Got to be very careful though, my own. Getting very low there, but I managed to get the shield cell off. I just can't quite get this guy's shields down yet though. I mean, really, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be taking on a python anyway. Really, uh, certainly not in this kind of under under geared um, cobra. That's just the way I like to. You know, I like to roll. I like to take these kind of risks and stuff. It's just the way I've always played these these games. They were head to head, but I just cannot seem to get these shields down. This is when I'm really starting to realise, yeah, I'm starting to enjoy this Cobra now. I'm really starting to, you know, appreciate it. Uh, you don't feel like you're, you're, you're doing all the, the great cool manoeuvres like you're doing on a... Like on a, an eagle or something like that. I think he's used a, seal, a shield cell there. He starts healing his shields and it's like, oh, this is not so good now. Yeah, I mean, we are kind of jousting each other. I'm beating him in a turn and fight. I'm getting more shots off of him. But my shields are just taking that little bit of heat and... Time to run for it again. Really taking damage. That's the difference when he's hitting me. Just too much damage there. Uh, I'm down to 50%. I'm pretty much decided... I just, I just don't have it. I just cannot take on a python. I spent so long trying to do, do get shields down, but I just, just didn't quite have what it took. Uh, had I managed to get his shields down, I reckon, yeah, I could have taken down his hull as well. But in the end, I thought, right, okay, that's enough fun there. That was great, but that will do me for now. Now, here's a slight issue, yeah. My repair bill's 4,000, my, my ammo bill's 3,000, yeah. Um, that's like 7,500 overall. And uh, all I got from that was 6,000 credits for killing two eagles. Uh, now, I guess if you're winning the actual battles, then you, you make a bit more, yeah. But you're not going to make an awful lot of money in these war zones. Uh, so, you know, that's something that they probably need to have a look at. Right, so I'm just shy of a million credits, so 816,000, so quite a bit shy really, but that should hopefully be able to get me a Viper with one or two decent upgrades. So let's actually have a look at what I can find here. I went to Kepler Gateway in Kruger 60. It's a high tech of course, that's why I came here. Uh, that's, normally they've got 10 in the shipyard and all the upgrades you need. Um, right, a quick look here. You get better shields than the Cobra, yeah? Uh, worse armor. You basically keep the same hard points set up, except the bottom ones are a lot tighter on the vamp- uh, sorry, on the Viper, uh, I believe. Almost got a vampire there. Uh, the real drawback to the Viper is you, you lack internal compartments, anything like what the Cobra has. I mean, three size two, three size fours in the Cobra compared to, you know, this is not- not awesome at all, and it really lacks jump range as well. Uh, but it is more of, I mean, the Viper is a combat craft, out and out fighter, more than, you know, like the, the Cobra, which is a multi-purpose craft. 
We're now in a combat ship and I'm going to outfit it. Right, so it's the same story again. Two medium hard points, uh, except they're on the bottom. And the small hard points are on the top of the Viper. So we're going to put these pulse lasers on the bo sorry, on the top. No point not having the chaff launcher, yeah. Just it's a no-brainer, regardless of ship, whatever ship you're flying. I think it's pretty much a no-brainer, yeah. Um, and we'll just go with the heat sink launcher again. You never know when you need it. Right. Apart from that, though. I'm actually going to do the same as I did the last time and show you what the Viper is like at stock. As soon as you buy it, it's full of E3 stuff. Uh, from what I've heard and from what I remember the last time I had the Viper, it is diabolically bad. Uh, it just can't turn at all, but I'll give it a go just so you can see it. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll upgrade some stuff after after we've seen what it fights like, you know, at stock. I better not forget to actually buy weapons first though. So I think I'll just stick with the same loadout as I normally go with. Yeah, why not? I'll take back my old weapons. Uh, although I'll probably go with something different in the long run. But just to try, not, try it out just now. Exact same weapons. Uh, which means I will be... Buying my old gimbal pulse lasers back as well. As you can see, the jump range is horrible. 6.27 light years. Uh, <laughs> really bad. But you can help it quite a lot with even just a C3 drive, yeah? Which I'll probably end up buying. I've got quite a few pirates in here, so this could get interesting. See that even with uh, two pips and weapons, I can't even just fire my multi cannons. Yeah, let some weapon power build up a bit. I hate turning is just horrible, isn't it? But thrusters appear to be pretty good. That's like up and down thrusting and... See how we can spin around quite nicely. And this is only the basic thrusters as well. He's a rather lame opponent, uh, but I'll find another. So it definitely, I mean, already it feels different to the Cobra, as in it doesn't have the it doesn't have the pitch. Even with, even under boost, it's just not it's not anything like as good. Uh, what I'm going to try is a flight assist flight assist off. Uh, against this guy. He's gonna die. Flight assist off. Target destroyed. Flight assist off. 
flight assist off is even, it's not very good either. Uh, yeah, pitch just doesn't seem to do anything in all honesty. What's it going to be? A different, you know, it's going to be a really different way of uh, dog fighting because I'm really used to pitching a lot. You can see that was with four pips and weapons I've, I've run out as well. So, you know, the basic distributor, no good. Uh, no good either. You can sort of tell that you're, not, you're never going to be a great dogfighter in a, a basic Viper, yeah? But some of you probably already knew that. So now I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do and get some upgrades. Those were very poor opponents, which is probably the only way that I killed them so easily. Uh, if I go fighting somewhere, some something decent in this, I'm just going to get destroyed. Right, so I've got about half a million to spend. Uh, stuff like power plant, it's not desperate right now, but it might be after I upgrade some of this other stuff. Thrusters are going to be the main thing, I think, for this, for the Viper. And, uh... Obviously the power distributor is always great no matter what. I am going to have to upgrade my frame shift drive because I'm kind of stuck here in a little corner uh, because I just can't jump out. So, let's have a look at thrusters first of all. Right, so, what are we using? Right, we're using E3s. Uh, let's have a look at the D3. It's pretty cheap. Actually, this is the thing, it's so much cheaper again, you're back to the sort of level of upgrading the, the Eagle, you know, with these 18, 20,000 upgrades and stuff like that. There are some slightly more expensive ones, but overall it's nothing like upgrading the Cobra, which really is expensive. Yeah, you can see I'm actually, I'm definitely going to have to upgrade my power plant, uh, because even just these D3 thrusters are starting to, you know, use an awful lot more power. Uh, let's have a look. Another C3. Again, that's a lot more power. Uh, I would like to lose a bit more mass as well, if possible. Um, but you're looking at really the A3, which is going to cost me 500,000. It's going to cost me all of my credits. So I, I just can't afford that. Uh, now, I'm probably not going to go with the B3s because, as you can see, even though the optimal mass and the, the maximum mass increases, the power draw increases as well, and I'm gaining three tons of mass. So, not really keen on that. I'm guessing that these C3s are looking like they'll be my my first upgrade. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Now, that's using a lot of power. Uh, I'm definitely going to need to get a, a much better power plant. Let's have a look at the frame shift drive now, though. What we're using again, we're using an E3 again. Uh, now this is really just about gaining a bit of jump range, so you know it's not, it's nothing great in combat. Obviously, if you can lose a, a bit of mass again, uh, but you can't really do that with the with the threes. Oh yeah, you can. Here's a D3 that loses a quite a bit of mass. Again, there's a bit of gain in the power draw. Overall, this looks like a pretty good upgrade. You know, I'm gaining a little bit of jump range out of it. And I'm losing three ton of mass, but most importantly, it's pretty cheap as well, so you might as well just buy this one. Right, so the power distributor. We'll be going straight for the A3, I think. Yep, yeah, I can't see any good reason not to go directly for the A3 power distributor. I mean, this is 50% better, more than 50% better in some cases. Weapons chart recharge goes way up. Yeah. Yeah, once again, the power distributor, the A3, is a complete no-brainer. 
Right. So, I have been ignoring sensors quite a lot, but you do actually realise that, you know, you do need them. They do help with gimbaled locks as well. So, if I'm using gimbaled weapons, I really should have a better sensor suite as well. So, we'll have a look at what's in this. Again, it's not something I like to spend too much on because the power draw. You've got to be careful with the power draw as well. Now, I'm looking at these D3s simply because of the mass. Yeah. I mean, one thing I dislike doing is adding mass to my ship because it, it you know, it affects all your turning and your top speeds and stuff. So, I'm just going to go with these uh, D3s, I think. A little bit more power again, but the gains are worth it. Right, now I do need to fix up my power plant now. I need another megawatt at least. Right, now that's not good because they've only got the A3 here, which I cannot afford. Uh, the A2 is a... And the A2 would actually be an increase. It's quite interesting that, actually, yeah? A2 is actually so much better than what I've, uh, what I've got at default, the E3. Even though it's a class down, yeah? It's a class 2 instead of a class 3, but... But yeah, I might as well take it because there's no, there's no reason not to. So that'll cover my power, my power needs. I guess that's pretty much it for now. All these internals and stuff. Uh, I'll maybe have a look at the shield generator. Now, the thing about the Viper is it's got some very good shields on it. Way better shields than the Cobra. We, we found out this, you know, information a few days ago. Uh, it's somewhat surprising just how much better the Viper shields are, even compared to like the, the class 4 shields. The Viper can only have class 3 shields, but they are far superior than the, the Cobra's class 4. And if you remember, while I was, you know, fighting those pythons and stuff in, in that uh, conflict zone, it was my shields that would give me the most trouble. Now, I'm going to sell this cargo rack. I'll move my shield up to the top. Doesn't make any difference. I just like to have my shield in this, you know, first compartment. Uh, discovery scanner. Probably don't need it. Let's have a look at the shield generators. I'm using an E3. Now here's a D3. What's the comparison light in this? Again, losing mass. Got enough power to cover it. So that's definitely, I'm definitely looking at that for an upgrade. Very cheap one, that one. Um, I will have to buy a shield cell bank as well, though. Right, C3. Bit more mass to it. Um, and I probably can't afford the rest. Yeah, I'm just going to go with the D3 right now then, I think. I really need to start making some money in this game because it's holding me back. Uh, probably need a couple of million to fully upgrade the Viper to, you know, to, to its actual best. That's half a million. It's, it's going to make some good upgrades though, so it shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Right, so I'm going to go with this D3. Right, now you will need a, a shield cell bank as well, yeah? What have we got? This is a class 3 as well. So probably, because your shields are so good, it probably makes an awful lot of sense to have a good shield cell bank as well, especially for, you know, a combat craft. So rather than put it in a 1 or a 2, I'm thinking, you know, a class 3 shield uh, cell bank, the one that gives you the most recharges, so I'll check that out. Here's a B3. Let's have a look at what... That's very... A lot of mass in that, though, yeah? Eight tons. I can't afford anything else. Uh, anything better. Now, what we'll do is we'll have a look at how many charges this B3 comes with. If you go to munitions, you can see it's got 10. 10 recharges.
on what are already pretty good shields. You know, this is what's given making the Viper a, a, a pure combat craft. Right, so I can cover my rebuy cost easily enough. It's 27,000. I don't want to spend anything more on it right now, I don't think. I've got an empty here. Um, might as well go with a cheap fuel scoop just in case I run out of fuel. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> this D2 will do me. Right, so I've kept my scanner as well, even though I probably won't use it. Uh, it's two tons. Uh, I'm going to keep a hold of it just now, though. Right, so, set all this up regarding my fire groups and stuff. And what's this usage at 100%? Am I using too much power? I'm guessing maybe I need to start switching some stuff off. So let's go back to outfitting again. If I can find the key. Yeah, I'm just a little bit over now. What happens if I ditch my scanner? Doesn't really do anything. Um, yeah, it was a fuel scoop did it. This has put me pretty close, but I'm still under it. Right, so let's just go with this cheap fuel scoop right now. Now, if you remember before, what I did was, because I'm not using any cargo space, I can just turn off the cargo hatch. You know, that saved me 6% power. All this stuff here about setting priority and stuff, this is a video all of, all on its own. I'm not going to bother with it right now, but I will eventually you know, cover this properly. Uh, see how you can save power and stuff like that. Quick check of the bulletin board. Right. Eight war zone in Eta Cassiopeia. Can I make it though is the question because it's 8.818 light years away. Yeah, I can make it there. It's, this should be pretty interesting. I've got a few upgrades. The big one again is the power distributor. My thrusters are better. Basically everything got, a, got an improvement of sorts there, I think. Right, so I finally arrived here at Ita Cassiopeia, and there's only one conflict zone, which is a high intensity, so this could be interesting. Uh, remember, the last one was a low intensity, and it was full of anacondas and pythons. We'll see how it goes. So here it goes, let's have a look and see who I will be fighting for. Move along to functions, choose your faction, and it's already over by the looks of things. Yeah, when you've only got one choice like that, it pretty much means that the, the battle's already done. Uh, so slightly buggy in all honesty, because how exactly am I supposed to do this uh, mission now? Thruster's pretty nice, it's got to be said. Uh, especially when you boost and you get the thrust. Now watch me, I'm going to boost around this Navy ship. Uh, that, that sideways boost, that's my lateral thrusters while I'm, I'm using uh, boost. You can see I really got out of the way quickly. These aren't even A thrusters, remember, uh, but that's pretty handy looking. Yeah, that's... That could even be better than the Eagle, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty tasty. Um, gotta go and see if we can find another uh, conflict zone. Right, 
Right, so I've found a low intensity conflict zone, so hopefully uh, there'll be some action in this one. Change my side. And once again, it looks like it's all over. Gonna be fun. Master in an anaconda. And it's out turning me quite handily the looks of things. I mean, this is pretty sad. Flight assist off. Uh, Flight assist off. Right. Back concentration here. I need to be careful with my boost, yeah, because your boost is much faster. Interesting just how little damage it, that she's doing to my shields, though, yeah? Just goes to show how good the shields in the Viper are. I certainly wasn't expecting to get interdicted by a master level anaconda, that's for sure. As long as you've got those four pips into systems. Try not to get rammed. Right, so I'm firing my chaff a lot here, yeah? Right, I've got to tap the power plant targeted now. Cannons are overloading quite a lot. Yeah. But I'm trying to keep as much into shields as I can because... It really does help keep them up. Stay a little bit closer. Um, 
Maybe not that close quite. Shields. That's lucky. Power plants at twenty six per cent. shields down again. It's really struggling to turn though. It's so bad. Oh that's not good. Oh that's not good. Right. Start running. Remember I do still have the speed advantage. I'll get my shields back up, then I'll head back. A quick check of my modules tells me I have got four shield cell banks left. Power plant's down to 26%, yeah? So I've got, I've got a fair chance here still of destroying this anaconda, I think. into shield, or as much as I can into shield. Pretty difficult this. Not good. Shoot it up. As you can see, the multi cannon is just not doing anything at all to the shields, yeah? This is going pretty well now, though. The difference between foreign shields and anything else is absolutely massive.
just can't get my weapons to recharge. I don't have the, the power plant targeted now because I lost contact, yeah? Oops, I'm making a few mistakes here. Yeah, a shield cell here. I'm gonna run. Power plant's down to 10%. Flight assist off. Try not to get too far away, remember, yeah? Or I'm going to have to get through all this again. Flight assist Good. Right, this is more like the thing now. It really does seem to be all about being able to keep your weapons firing as well. Yeah, that was quick. I mean, I took those shields down very rapidly there. Some reason my cannon doesn't seem to fire an awful lot though. 80,000 credit bounty. Just like that. And I say just like that. No, I think you can see that that was quite a lot of hard work. Uh, I'm making a few mistakes, but I definitely felt that during that I was learning something. Um, some very interesting manoeuvres you get when you're, you know, jousting towards them and your thrusters are very good, you know, at, at getting you up and in, 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 into the side. Your lateral thrusters and even your up and down thrusters can really help you to get over the top of them. And you notice that the lasers miss you when you're coming head to head like that. Um, this is the best power distributor I'm using, although I'm not using the best uh, power plant, which may be help. I always like to, you know, have something in in engines, and that's and that's the big issue here, I think, because you see the difference that the shields make. And you've got those four pips in shields. I was just absorbing all those turret fire. That, you know, it was hardly bothering me at all. Um, but when you're doing that, you, you know, you're kind of struggling to get your engines going. Uh, you don't really need it as much though, because you're such a fast ship anyway. Yeah. The big problem there was my weapons fire, I just could not maintain it. But you saw right at the end there, when I put everything into weapons and just decided to go for it, hell for leather, those shields come down really quickly. Uh, so possibly, you know, running maybe three systems, three weapons, or that power plant upgrade. If I can get that, that A, uh, that class A power plant, then, so that rating A power plant, then this could be, you know, this could make a big difference. I've got 100,000 bounties to pick up. So that's definitely my biggest bounty uh, from, a, from a NPC without, the, you know, it being an assassination mission. No question about that. And I had one shield cell bank left. 
I mean, it's just a learning process. You just have to keep trying these things. In all honesty, I'm very, very surprised that I won that one in the end because it's a pretty tough fight. It's got to be said, that was a pretty tough fight. Right, reload, repair. Thousand repair, not too bad. That was 20% I lost against that anaconda, I think. Um... Nice hundred thousand to pick up in bounty vouchers. I can start thinking about another upgrade. I'm not sure what I think about this at all. I mean, I, I really like the eagle, yeah? And I was sort of enjoying the cobra. It felt... It felt like safe. Uh, there's no question that the shields on the viper are fantastic. Uh, and these are far from being, you know, the best shields that I've got. Um, I can definitely see how a fully upgraded Viper is going to be, like, a real beast in, in combat, without a doubt. There's a lot of learning to go there. It's not it's not a simple case of, you know, pips into engines all the time. You're already pretty fast. Your shields are great, so more pips into shields, more pips into weapons. It's, it's pretty interesting the way they've done it, you know, with the ships that have got these, these differences. Like, in the Eagle, I would just happily four, four pips and engines all the time uh, and just dance around these larger ships. You, you can sort of do that as well on the Viper, but, you know, you've, you've got other, other options, including just tanking the damage and, and, you know, really going all out hell for leather with your weapons. So it's pretty interesting. I still don't know what I think about it, though. Uh, I mean, I've got to give it a chance instead of, you know, just ditching it straight away. So I'm going, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to do more of these bounties. I certainly wasn't expecting to get interdicted by a master level anaconda. Uh, so that, that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, it could have went either way. You know, it's a shame about the, the conflict zone's not quite working. That's what I'd really intended to do for this one. After after showing you the conflict zone in the, in the Cobra, I thought it would have been a nice idea to get it, you know, in the Viper. Uh, just to see how those shields, you know, would hold up against, you know, bigger ships like the Pythons and stuff like that. But maybe, maybe, you know, in the next one I'll get something like that done. Thanks for watching anyway, and I hope to see you in the next one.